I'm honored to be with you today as we celebrate your graduation from one of the best universities in the world. It's truly a great accomplishment. Congratulations. As you know, I'm an engineer, and the Wright brothers who designed the first airplane are some of my engineering heroes. Wilbur Wright, the older of the brothers, was once asked what he recommended to become successful. His advice was to find yourself two good parents and be born in Ohio. I think we should modify this quote and say, find yourself two good parents and graduate from the University of Nebraska. I like this quote because it suggests you now likely have the ingredients needed for success. The Wrights were very humble, and this quote hides their incredible hard work and persistence that led to their professional success. And if you're going to be successful like they are, that work is still ahead of you. But humility, hard work, and persistence are also Nebraska qualities that I hope we reinforce, we reinforce during your time at UNL. I also like this quote because it credits their parents. We have a lot to thank our parents for today. They have sacrificed a lot to get us here, primarily money. I'm sure they might also mention other things they've sacrificed, but they'll probably keep reminding you about the money. In my remarks today, I want to suggest that you need to realize you now have the ingredients for success, but what happens next is largely up to you. You need to, be, to take an active and aggressive role in creating your future, and thereby creating our future. For many of you, your life has been very structured so far with high school and college. You've been largely riding the wave with doing what you're supposed to be doing. Things are different after today. The structure is gone. You need to remember that the world is out there to be shaped and to be engaged. I would guess that most of you by now know what your first job will be. At least I and your parents hope you have a plan by now. However, in today's world, people don't stay at a job as long as they once did. And I would also bet that none of you know what your second job or your third job will be. I think you should start creating jobs number two and jobs number th job number three now. And I suggest the way to do that is to add art to this job you're about to begin. This is the one thing I want you to remember from my remarks today. You need to first add some art to your job and then generously give that art to others. You won't be compensated for your art. This has to be a gift you choose to give away. I'm using the word art, but I'm not talking about paintings and sculpture and what many of us think of as art. I'm talking about something first that's beautiful and something that you create, and you add that to your job. Let me explain in two ways, first through an analogy and then through an example. Okay, first the analogy. No one ever remembers what's said at your graduation, but I'm gonna make it easy for you. When someone asks you in 20 years what was said at your graduation, you can say that some guy talked about an egg. You can all make fun of me tonight at your celebration dinners, making fun of the egg guy. So think of a fried egg. There's yellow yolk in the center, and it's surrounded on all, on all sides by egg white. The yolk in the middle is this job you're about to begin. When people ask you what you're gonna do for a living, you describe the yolk. Most jobs have a map, a description that tells you everything you need to, to, to do to be good at the job. That part is the yolk. But surrounding the yolk is the egg white. That's the art I want you to surround your job with, just like the egg white surrounds the yolk. It is important to note that there's more white than there is yolk, and that's our goal. Let's make the white really big relative to the yolk. Let's make the art really big relative to the job. So we're gonna remember the egg from today. The problem is I can't tell you what the art should be. If I could tell you, we could write it down in your job description and would become part of the yolk instead of the white. So the art can't be explained uh, easily. So let me try with an example. My wife works as a physician here in town, and so I frequently cook for my children by taking them to Subway. I can draw a perfect map for how to work at Subway. I've been there enough. When someone walks in the front door, you say, hello and welcome to Subway, and then you ask them what kind of bread, what kind of meat, what kind of cheese, do you want it toasted? I'm sure there's many things you need to do to work at Subway, but you can see how all of that can be written down and described quite well. It's, an easy, it's easy to make a map for working at Subway, 
That part's the yoke. Now, when I have the four kids there, it's not always easy to order, especially when they're hungry. But some weeks ago, we encountered the one in 1,000 of Subway employees, a young college-age lady helping us to order. The kids were all frustrated, and she could tell. She began to talk to each of the kids. She asked them what sports they played, what video games they like. She made a personal connection with each kid as she took their order. She had each of them laughing. She was wonderful. I think she has big things ahead of her because she added art to her job, which in this case was making our kids laugh. And then she gave that art to us, and it made our lives better. That's the distinction. She gets paid the same as every other Subway employee. The yoke part is the same for her as it is for someone who's just going through the motions. However, she surrounded her job with art, and she gave that art to us. Think of Yo-Yo Ma. Many people play the cello as technically proficient as he does, but he has truth and beauty when he plays Bach. Think about Tom Petty, Bob Dylan, and Bruce Springsteen. I'm sorry to date myself. You'll have to ask your parents about those guys later. These guys make a lot of money singing, even though they're just terrible singers. And they're successful because they add art to their singing. Think about how Elon Musk has opened all the Tesla Motors patents because he thinks we should all be driving electric cars instead of using fossil fuels. Think about the Wright brothers' father, Bishop Wright, who covered all the standard bases of being a parent, like providing food and a decent home, but then was certain to feed his children's appetite for learning by surrounding them with books. He also taught them to work hard, to be good, and to be humble. So today's one takeaway is to think about the egg. You need to figure out what art you can add to your job and then make that art big relative to what everyone else is doing. I can't tell you what your art should be. Maybe it's making the kids laugh as they order their food. Maybe it's choosing to give away all your patented technology because you think it will help others. Remember that egg and make the art big relative to your job and generously give it away. Also, keep and foster these Midwest qualities demonstrated by the Wright brothers. Be kind, do justice, and walk humbly. Congratulations on your graduation, and go Big Red.